Hey, Ian, you're coming off a nice win in June. What's the mood going into this one? You know, it's it's the same mood. You know, it's, uh, you know, I made a ton of changes coming off those two uh, close losses that I, I suffered last year. And, um, you know, I'm building that momentum, that confidence is building. I've assembled a new team, new coaches, and uh, I just feel my momentum's picking up. And uh, I'm excited to have the Hurricane 2.0 put on another show this Saturday. Obviously, you had the injury, so you weren't able to make it to the last fight. Did you watch his fight against Kyle that night? And what were your thoughts on his performance? Yeah, it was a huge bummer, man. I was really trying to take advantage of the COVID times, you know, especially coming off a one-minute knockout. I was trying to get that quick turnaround. Unfortunately, got injured first week back to training. And, uh, yeah, I got to watch Brendan Allen fight a debut guy who I believe is a 170-pounder. And, uh, you know, I wasn't impressed. You know, it was uh, it was a back and forth fight. It was an entertaining fight to watch, but I've seen so many holes in his game. And, uh, you know, I believe I'm going to capitalize on that. And, and dude's just not quite at my level yet. And I'm going to give him his first lesson in the UFC, and I'm going to move on to my aspiration of being uh, the champ and start climbing those ranks again. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys have both been the LFA middleweight champion. I don't know about the timing per se, but was he ever on your radar for a fight before coming to UFC? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we've had some words exchanged on Twitter in the past. And, um, you know, I got the belt before him. I got the call before him. And, yeah, I mean, we've kind of came up together. He's fought some of my buddies like Eric Anders and... Uh, and yeah, I mean, I knew eventually we were going to fight and he earned his shot. He's coming off, you know, three or four wins in a row. And, you know, unfortunately, I, I was climbing and, and almost got I was in the top 10 for a little bit, but unfortunately suffered a loss to the number seven guy post decision. So I got to prove myself again to, to show the UFC that I'm ready to continue to climb the ladder and, and, and go after that belt again. So um, I knew I was going to fight this guy at some point, And I'm finally uh, I'm really happy that it's happening this Saturday. Final question for me. What are you most looking forward to showing for yourself in tonight? Sorry, in Saturday's fight. Um, you know, just with the move, went to Thailand, then switched gyms, then trained at Extreme Couture, trained at Genesis, um, trained a little bit with Elevation. You know, I've learned so much. I've grown so much. My last fight, you know, I didn't get to quite show it all. People saw my movement with just a little bit of the fight you got to see, which was a minute. And uh, I'm excited just to show how, how, how much improvement I've made and uh, truly be in being the new Hurricane 2.0 and, you know, a real threat for this middleweight division. Thank you. Yep. Up next, we'll go to Santino Honasan with Sports Kid. Hey, Ian. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Um, Based on a, on a previous interview, you spoke about uh, ha working, having to uh, go and face unranked fighters, uh, working up the rankings, so to speak. How important is being able to uh, power through or um, go through these kinds of fights? Uh, obviously, fighters want the big names or want to be able to face the big names um, as as. Uh, as immediately as possible, but uh, how important is being able to um, take fights like these um, against unranked fighters? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm fighting these. I'm at the end of the rankings list, you know, at the moment. I was top 10. I fought these ranked, big-name, tough fighters almost immediately in my, in my career in the UFC. And so now, you know, it's I'm at the tail end. I took some close decision losses. I've made some adjustments i've made some changes and uh, i'm truly a new fighter and now it's just adding to the highlight reel uh some i'm just putting wins together so the ufc can get behind me and uh, i can build some momentum build my following and uh you know i can get into these big uh big profile fights and get into these co-main main events and uh, get back to where i was and continue to climb the rankings to get that belt all right. So, if you if you're able to get past Brendan Allen uh, this weekend, do you expect to be getting a step up in competition in your next fight? You know, when I get past Brendan Allen this Saturday, um, you know we're gonna, uh, you know, 
have a conversation with my manager and my coaches and we're just looking for opportunities man this is COVID times a lot of the guys are booked you know these guys keep calling me out uh Mearshart called me out Alan called me out I'm gonna I handle Mearshart about to handle Alan uh you know Vittori called me out I know he's got a fight booked but if something opens up I'll be ready um I'm ready for whatever man you know I I feel like I'm ready for any challenge and we'll just see what opportunity comes my way all right just uh last question for me very quickly um You spoke about the Hurricane 2.0. Uh, you know, we know you've been a lot uh, through a lot in your life. Um, from then to now, how much has changed, and uh, how much has it been like? How how much improvement has it been for you? Yeah, the improvement's huge, and not just with fighting. You know, the the improvement spiritually, uh, physically, mentally has just grown so much. It's just uh, I'm, I'm more well-rounded as a human being, and that makes me such a dangerous fighter and just being able to control my future, my career, the way I want it to be controlled and being able to travel and do things I love and, and make the calls that I meet, I need to make for my company, my business and uh, God bringing me with some of the best coaches in the world, Jacob Ramos at Genesis and uh, you know, uh, with Peter Straub and, and Eric from extreme couture, you know, just, just blessed man to have all these coaches in my life and, Uh, yeah, you're, you're going to see a big difference. You already saw a big difference in my last fight, and that was five months ago. So just imagine now. All right, thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Next question is from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Ian, you've talked a lot about, you know, working with the new team and the guys you're working with. Usually we hear that, you know, when you work with new coaches, new teammates, it usually takes a little while. while to, you know, fully get acclimated and, you know, kind of get used to each other. Uh, what do you feel like has been the biggest difference since you've kind of been a bit of a nomad over these last years, these last you know, six or eight months where you've been in Thailand and you're extreme couture. I know you're still training in Colorado. Like what's that been like for you and how much better do you feel now going into this fight even versus the last one? Yeah. I mean, it feels so much better. I mean, I feel like, you know, there was a lot of pressure that last fight. I did feel the nerves because I hadn't fought so long. I made so many changes and it's kind of like, Right, right before you walk out, you're like, did I do the right thing? You know, you, you sometimes even question that. And to see all my hard work and, and all these hard decisions I had to make just, uh, you know, just come to fruition and come the way, come together the way I always imagined it. And for me to put on, a, uh, you know, a almost flawless performance, um, you know, it was just awesome. Now the confidence is growing, the momentum is growing, the hype's growing, and, and I feel like it's all about that. And my mental game is just so much stronger. And I just, I'm the type of guy, man, I, I just seem like I flourish when I'm in these chaotic situations with kind of being a nomad and moving and training here and new training partners. Because, I mean, you always get those those new nerves when you come to a new gym. And uh, But the good thing is, is I have the same coaches that were with me in my last fight. Uh, that has stayed the same. And uh, just minus uh, Eric from Extreme Couture, because uh, he couldn't make this one. And uh, But... I'm, I'm excited, man, and, and you guys are going to be excited when you get to see this performance on Saturday. There's no one-size-fits-all when it comes to training in MMA. Some guys or girls flourish in a team atmosphere. Other people kind of like the more boxing style where you build a camp around you personally instead of, you know, having you know, 50 guys around you. It seems like you're kind of going more building a camp around you. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm, I've just been – you know, going around really seeing what works for me. And I encourage other fighters out there. Like, I feel like a cookie cutter style for everyone is not is not the answer because every fighter is different. And, you know, unfortunately, too, with COVID has made it a lot more difficult than it used to be, for sure. So you almost kind of have to build your camp around you just because you see how many people are popping for COVID in gyms that have to shut down. So I've been kind of dodging that like the plague, you know, bouncing out from different gym, like getting out of there just in time. And Uh, yeah, I do enjoy, uh, you know, kind of having that camp around me, built around me. And you know, I feel like I'm at the point in my career where I've earned it. You know, I can make enough to financially support that. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I love the team atmosphere. I love having a team behind me. But at the end of the day, I need one or two or three great training partners and these great coaches with their eyes on me. And that's where I improve the best. And you mentioned that, you know, going into this fight where you're at number 15 in the rankings and you've been in the top 10, as you mentioned, but we have kind of a weird thing going on right now, like the hype versus reality in the division where some guys are making, you know, giant leaps ahead without necessarily being tested. You look at a guy like Kamzat Shumayev, who I think is a supremely talented guy, but 
you know, three wins, and now he's fighting the number three ranked welterweight, and he beat a guy in Gerald Burchard, a guy you knocked out as well. Like, is it weird or frustrating when you see those kind of things happening where guys are kind of taking big leaps ahead? And, and, and Brendan Allen's a great opponent, but obviously he's not ranked right now. Yeah, you know, absolutely, man. I don't, I don't try to get jealous about anyone's career path or, or their journey because everyone's different, man, and, and God has different plans for different people. And, uh, you know, I would have loved to fight Hamazat. You know, I was one of the guys that was like, bro, like, I'm ranked. You want to test yourself into the rankings? Like, I'm here. I feel like we kind of have similar styles. We have great ground game. Um, we both have great boxing and striking as well. Um, when I was out in Thailand, I love training with all those Russian guys and extreme couture. You know, those are the guys I, I'm attracted to because their mentality. I like their grappling. I like their uh, just their style. Even when I was 13 years old, I was traveling to Moscow, Russia, and Ulan Ude, which was in Siberia, uh, competing against these Russian guys. I love the challenge. So I would have loved that challenge. But, you know, good for him. He got a huge jump. He, he passed everyone uh, to fight Leon Edwards. And you know, he, I felt like he kind of ducked me and Neil, but, uh, you know, that's his path. I'm not hating on him. Uh, we both knocked out the same guy. He, I think he did it about, a, you know, maybe 50 seconds quicker than me. But, um, yeah, man, it's it, it's crazy how this sport works. It, you just got to be ready for opportunities when they come knocking. And that's what I'm just going to keep doing. That's all I can control. And so I'm going to, God willing, get through this fight and look to maybe fight on the same card as Hamazat. And who knows what the future holds. Well, he said he wants to do middleweight and welterweight. I assume if, if the opportunity came about, you would uh, you would jump at the chance to fight him again? I would fight him tomorrow, like, if any time. Like, as long as, like, I'm healthy, which I am. And, uh, yeah, I would love that opportunity. I would love that challenge.